sorry for that. Okay, so imagine it's the year 2030 and you're waking up in the morning and after some exercise and breakfast, you had to work in your self-driving car. So you're working as a data scientist for clinical trials at a large pharma company. And once you arrive at the office, you obviously start your computer. And then it's time to choose the best tool for today's job. And the options are certainly plenty. You could use R, you could use SAS, you could use Python, you could use Julia. And that's just to name a few, there's even more. So as a multilingual data scientist, you use all those tools on a regular basis. But today's task, which is programming Atom data sets, is best done in one of those, and that is R. So once our studio is up and running, you start loading your favorite package for the job. And again, the question this time is a no brainer. Over the past decade, all large pharma companies have joined forces to develop one open source industry standard toolkit. And what package might that be? Well, it's Admiral. So then you may be asking yourself, well, what makes Admiral so special? Why is everyone using that now in 2030? Fundamentally, we think it's uh, one of our design choices, which is to make Admiral a very modular toolkit. So I'm very sure all of you have seen solutions for Atom dataset that look something like this, where you have a single function or a single macro that tries to create one Atom dataset sort of in one go, in one click. So there's one function or macro then for ADVS, one for ADAE, one for ADTTE, and so on and so forth. And in my own experience and in the experience of many statistical programmers we interviewed before we started developing Admiral, these kind of solutions work great if you have very standard data sets, but the more you have to adjust that to any study specifics, the harder it gets to work with these kind of solutions, which is why we think that's not the way going forward. Instead, as I mentioned, we wanted to design something very modular. And so what we believe is that each derivation should be one module. And in this case of our R package, that really means a single function. And the single function really does only one thing and one thing only, which is implementing this derivation. That could obviously be very different things. It could be daytime imputation. It could be deriving a less study date known alive, or it could be deriving a new parameter in a BDS type data set. All very different tasks, but again, each function just does this one thing it's supposed to do. And then for you as a data scientist, creating an Atom data set basically becomes an exercise of picking and choosing from the existing Admiral functionality, developing any study specific functionality you may need on top yourself, and then calling these functions in the correct order to take your source STTM domains and turn them into a proper Atom data set. But enough talking about Admiral, let's actually jump right into a demo into our studio and see how this would look like in practice. So I have here a little demo script already opened. Um, in this demo script, I will try to create a little ADEG dataset. So we'll take the EG STTM domain as source, and then we'll do a couple of derivations to turn it into an Atom dataset. For startups, we'll load the Admiral package, and then for some general purpose data wrangling, we'll also use dplyr. We'll read our source data sets from our files in this case, and then the first thing we'll do is we'll join on some ADSL variables onto the SCTM domain just to get the variables we need for certain derivations downstream. So let's start off by quickly sourcing that. And now we can start off um, deriving our variables. So the first thing we could do is um, derive a date time variable. And because all derivations in Admiral are designed such that they take a data set as input and return a data set as output, we can simply use the pipe, which I think you all know and love from dplyr. So you take the output from one derivation, pipe it as the input to the next derivation, and so on and so forth. So the creation of the data set should really become kind of a sequence of derivation calls. And so let me insert the pipe, and then we'll start off with a first function, derive vars dtm, and we'll use that to derive the analysis date time. So we'll specify a first parameter, new var prefix, so that will be A because we want to derive the ADTM variable. Then we'll say, well, our source variable in this case is EG DTC. We say, do not perform date imputation. So we'll leave that as null. However, we do want to perform time imputation. And we'll use a built-in rule called first, which basically imp imputes seconds, minutes, and hours if they're missing to zero. 
And then finally, we also want to create a flag imputation variable, but only for the time component because that's the only one we imputed. So let's quickly run that and then take a look at the output data set. So scrolling to the right here, we can see our source variable, EGDTC. It's a partial date time collected as a character format. And we can see here we only have hours, for example, collected. Here we have hours and minutes, but we never have seconds collected, for example. However, giving, using our derivation, we imputed missing seconds and minutes with zeros here. And we also set the appropriate time imputation flag. Next up, we can turn our date time and just uh, get the date part out of it and derive the ADT variable. For that, we can use another derivation function, which is derive vars DTM to DT. And then we'll specify which variables we want to compare or convert, in this case, only ADTM. But in case of AAE, that might be a start and an end date. So you could specify multiple variables here. And then while we're on that, we'll also and derive the study day variable, so ADY in this case. And we'll just use derive var ADY for that. And as you can see, reference date by default is treatment start date, and the input date is ADT, which is just what we need in this case. So let's save that and execute. And if we take a look again at our ADEG data set here, we can see now we have successfully get just the date component out of the date time and correctly calculated our analysis date. Next up, we'll do something that's very, very common in any type of BDS data set, whether it's ADEG or ADVS, which is deriving new parameters, i.e. new records based upon existing ones. So Admiral provides a general purpose function for that called derive, derive param, which um, you can kind of implement your own um, kind of logic uh, derivations upon, but we have uh, actually lots of functions built on top of that that already implement certain logic. For example, one is called derived param QTC. That's the one I will showcase, which calculates a corrected QT interval, which is something you would typically do for an ADEG data set. So let's quickly open up the help page for this function. So as you can see, Data set is the first argument as always, and then we need to specify a set of by variables. And for this call, we will use the following. We'll use all the variables we've specified on top from ADSL, so the ADSL vars, and then we'll also take visit as well as ADT. And then we'll specify a method because there's different methods how you could correct a QT interval. We'll use one that's implemented here, which is bizet. And then we'll set certain values other than AVAL, which we calculate. So we'll set param CD and also param. So param CD, we could set to QTCB and then param to be corrected QT interval. And finally, we need to tell the function uh, where the unit variable is stored because it does some checks in order to do the proper calculation. And that will be an eg stress u. So let's see if this runs. Uh, it did not because I actually forgot a step. So before we can derive that, we'll actually need to map some STTM variables to atom variables. So that will be aval, aval c, and param cd. So you could just use mutate from dplyr like this here. And then once we have derived that, we have our required variables, param cd and aval, which uh, you see here are required for the derivation in order to function properly. So let's run that again. And now if we look at ADAG, we can see here that we now have 400 records. And if we look at our original data set, the eg domain, we can see that this were only 300. So we seem to successfully have added records to the data set. And in fact, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, that's where you'll find those. You can see param cd and param as specified, aval as calculated by the function. And then basically everything you specify in bivars is taken over from the existing records and everything which is not most um, importantly, all these STTM variables, they are just left blank. 
All right, then next up, we could continue by deriving a flag. And we'll do that by example of the analysis baseline flag, something that you typically want to derive in a BDS data set. So we can use this derive extreme flag function for that, which can be very flexible and can be used to derive many different flags. We'll specify the bivars as follows, study ID, use subject ID, and param CD. And then within each of those bivars, we want to order by analysis date, visit, and EG sequence. And then ABLFL will be the variable we want to create. And finally, we want to only flag the last uh, record after sorting. And also, we only want to consider those records which are actually at or before our treatment start date, because everything else cannot really count as baseline. That worked as well. And now that we have a baseline flag, we can actually continue and derive several other baseline related variables, namely the base variable, the change variable, as well as the percentage change variable. So as you can see here, that's just a simple sequence of calls. We have one function for base, one function for change, and one function for p change. And the latter two don't even require any arguments besides the data set. And if we run that and look at our data set now, we can see we've successfully flagged uh, the correct records. We have the base variable change, p change. It's not uh, ordered in any particular sensible way, so you would certainly want to add that at the end. Um, but this is how it looks like. So let's quickly finish this example off by actually doing the sorting. And then we'll also write the output to file. In this case, we'll save it as an RDS file, but you could as well output it as an XPT file for a submission, for example. So this should have given you a uh, first impression of how working with Admiral looks, uh, how you would use it, what's kind of the general look and feeling of the package. But there's so much more to it. And I just want to give you a quick teaser on that. If you visit our package website, um, you can really find all information we have provided on Admiral. It's the one-stop shop for anything Admiral related. First off, I'd encourage you to take a look at our reference section here, which is where you can find all Admiral functions. It's already a rather long uh, list, which is great to see. Most importantly, you will want to look at the derivations, which are up top here. You can see it's already quite some, but hopefully over the course of the next months and years, this will only grow. Also very importantly, we have a couple of vignettes. We've uh, structured that in user guides as well as developer guides. So if you're new to Admiral, check out the user guides first. But if you feel something is missing and you want to contribute, definitely also have a look at our developer guides. Um, such that you can contribute something to Admiral. On the user guide side, we have vignettes for certain uh, data set types, subject level ADSL, or current data sets like ADAE and ADCM, BDS finding like ADEG I just showed you, as well as ADBS, exposure data sets, and we also have a time to event vignette in the making. So lots of information here for you to find. And if you choose um, to look at any of those, you will find that we have provided you with a detailed programming workflow. What are the steps you would need to implement in order to derive such a data set class using Admiral function? As you can see here, it's all code with the output uh, directly below it. So it really takes you right, step by step from initial SCTM domains to your final Adam data sets. And with that being said, I would like to pass it over to my co-presenter, Tekla. Thank you, Thomas. Um, so how did Admiral come to be? It actually was an accident after Thomas uh, posted on LinkedIn about Roche's approach to creating Adam in R, and GSK was actually in the same uh, goal. So in, they decided to join voices and go collaborative instead of working in individual silos. And thus Admiral was born, which is the Adam in R asset library, which just offers an open source modular toolkit for generating Adam in R as Thomas has just demonstrated. So since, since, since its conception in March of 2021, we started with a developing team of about six developers and about 50 functions. And the team has only grown gradually as of the number of functions being released, culminating in a test release in September 2021, where we, ha we engaged with 60 plus testers across 19 companies. This testing period has just been completed in October, so two days ago, 
And some of the feedback we've gotten is they would highly recommend Admiral, mostly because it's really easy to learn and you don't need to be an expert in R. And the independent functions that Thomas demonstrated uh, allow the modular structure to for ease into get, getting in, into Admiral and into R. Uh, so now that the testing release is complete and the GitHub repo is open to everyone on a read-only access, we anticipate a hands-on workshop at the Fuse EU Connect in November 2021 and a similar hands-on workshop in March of 2022 for the Fuse US Connect, all this leading up to an open source release in Q1 and Q2 of 2022. After the open source release, uh, the development team will be gradually decreased and the focus will be on the users and whatever contribution they can uh, provide. So we go back and it's 2020 30. We're all hanging out in our self driving Teslas and enjoying our latest uh, article of statistical programming. And we get a chance to reflect on how far we've come since the release of Admiral eight years ago in 2022. As a programmer, we've been able to collaborate with other like-minded people. We've been able to reuse and share code, and this has encouraged seamless talent flow across the industry, which is a benefit that our companies enjoy since it leads to efficient resource management, especially when it comes to onboarding new programmers. And we're seeing accelerated, accelerated timelines to the submissions. Regulatory, like, regulatory bodies are uh, praising Admiral because of its transparency, quality and the consistency of the work that is submitted across the pharmaceutical industry. And really it's because of the overall impact of Admiral where we've reduced the burden of Adam creation across the industry, allowing our programmers to focus on insights, thus bringing treatments faster to patients, which is ultimately why we all work in the pharmaceutical industry. If all that sounds engaging, uh, please do join us in our live booth. There will be manned. It will be manned by somebody. Uh, and we can discuss more on Admiral and uh, no presentation is complete without a cliche. So it does take a village and these are some of the people in that village of Admiral. And we would also direct you to our website where you can read some of our source code. And thank you for that. I think we, uh, we have one minute. Thank you so much. Maybe just taking one question. Like one question is like, is there any validation step in terms of doing merging? Uh, yeah, that's actually something that's not there yet, but it's not the first time we heard the question. Uh, so we will make sure to implement something like that. Uh, definitely, if you feel there's a feature missing, come to our GitHub page and open an issue. That's the easiest way to get it on our radar. And we're very much happy to interact with you. Awesome. Thank you.